Hey y'all, hey, Jamie, that's me here. Welcome back to my channel. Let's go ahead and get into episode six of Sweet Life, Los Angeles. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and hop into it. So y'all know it's about to be Ty birthday, okay? And she is going to be bringing together about 20 friends, I think she said, some that are old and some that are new. Okay, then it's two different separate uh, friend groups that she about to bring together. Now, Jordan has decided to rent a plane for the kids. I was like, look at Jordan. I guess, honey. All right, cool. So they all arrive in Cabo. First of all, let me rewind. Okay, they rent this. Um, they 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 get Jordan gets them a plane. After that, we see them riding in the shuttle bus. PJ over there talking about how is he and Becky's first trip. I'm like. Baby, F you. You and Becky's first trip. You and Becky already had y'all first trip. You know, the trip when you sat up there and you had brought along a whole nother girl. Shut up. Anyway, all right, so they get to the house. The house looks good. The house looks good. They got their own pool. It's overlooking the uh, beach, okay? Their private beach. I said, come on. This looks really good, okay? Now, Gerald is being sweated about allowing Cheryl to pretty much do her thing. I feel like he always allows, allows Cheryl to do her thing. I never really see him hovering over her or anything. Thing like that but at the end of the day he was telling somebody like y'all can do the most but me and my girl huh, we're gonna be uh straight like we're not gonna be out here overly drunk and doing all this extra stuff and i kind of commend gerald for that like looking out for his girl like yeah she can roam she can hang out she can do what she want to do but at the end of the day we are on foreign territory so i'm gonna look out for mine regardless of what it is that y'all over there trying to do so that's that Ty and Amanda are talking and Amanda is really feeling a way about her boo not being there. She says she understands that his students are important to him. But at the end of the day, I guess she feels like this trip should be important, too, because it's a once in a lifetime type of trip. I'm like, girl, bye. Once in a lifetime kind of trip. Girl, go ahead. I didn't really like her energy about that. I feel like maybe he couldn't miss another day because he already took time off to go off to wherever y'all went to so he could spend time with you for your birthday and your special weekend or whatever. So maybe he didn't have enough time or enough uh, PTO that he could put in to take off. So, girl, shut up. OK, let's go ahead and move on. Um, Amanda, she mentions to Ty that she got a lot of best friends. And I'm like, girl, I ain't gonna lie. I do have quite a few, but I ain't got a lot. OK, not every single person there is going to be a best friend. Excuse me. But I guess I she's still holding on to them titles from when they were a kid. Still calling these people best friends, I guess. And there's really nothing wrong with that because I have my best friend. My son's got mama since, you know, I was in the eighth grade. Oh, girl, girl, she be considerate. She be considerate of my feelings and stuff. OK, for the most part. I don't know what kind of friend you got, but we're going to move on. OK, now, um. Kaylin. So you got Candace and I think you got uh Kaylin or whatever, whatever her dude's name is. So they drunk. Okay. She over there throwing up Miss Candace. And Ty is saying that you never know what you're going to get when it comes to uh homegirl. And I'm like, well, if you never know what you're going to get, why did you invite her? And then I had to think about it. And I said, you know what? Maybe the reason she invited her was so that she did not hear her mouth when she came back to uh LA. Homegirl would have been like, oh, so that's what we're doing. So you invited everybody else, but you didn't invite me. So it makes sense, I guess, as to why she invited her. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? Brie, Becky, and Amanda. So they're talking. They're over there chit-chatting and stuff. And Brie tells them about her gate and how he asked for a second date. And she says she ghosted him. I said, why am I not bothered? Why do I not mind the fact that she actually ghosted him? Girl, I wasn't mad at it at all. He wasn't given what's supposed to have been gave. It was something that was off about him, so I wasn't tripping off that. But then she speak on paying rent, right? She speaks on how they, um, how when it comes down to a man living with her, she don't want to have to split rent. She don't want to have to split rent. She wants him to take care of all of that. And I guess there's nothing wrong with that, but it's also nothing wrong with you splitting the rent as well. Um... Those are my thoughts, okay? But if it's all going to equal up to what the bills are, you know, if you were to pay the bills and he paid the mortgage, then he might well just go ahead and pay the mortgage or the rent, whatever. Okay, whatever works for y'all within y'all relationship, that's that. Okay, now Amanda says that she's wondering whether or not her man will be paying rent either. So obviously with Amanda, Amanda is thinking he don't have to solely pay the rent. Like we can go half on it or, or you know, he can do the rent, I'll do the bills, vice versa, whatever. So I feel like that's what Amanda is thinking, right? Um, Becky ends up being fake as hell, but we'll get to that. So Bree is feeling Cameron, one of Ty's friends. And I'm like, girl, you don't need to friend, uh, be feeling nobody else in this friend group. Girl, you need to go find you a stranger. 
You need to get somebody that's outside of this group. OK, she said she isn't impressed. She said, I'm not really pressed on Jordan. That's what she said until Jordan walked out and she ended up seeing him. He told her how nice she looked. OK, so, yeah, I think she said I'm pressed a little bit. Yeah, you are. You've been pressed. You've been pressed. The moment that he sat up there and said, skr, skr, when you tried to interrupt that conversation and he gave you dust. So let's move on. Um, they get to brunch. OK, Ashley, one of um, Thailand's friends from way back. She gives her a speech. It was really sweet. But here go Amanda being pressed as hell. Girl, cut it out. OK, some of y'all best friends gonna have to cut all that energy out. Being selfish, hovering over your best friends. Girl, you're going to have to cut it out. Talking about some, I've been here for 10 to 12 years, so my position is solidified or whatever. It's like, girl, bye. And people that's been there for 10, 12, 15 years can also get dismissed, girl. Just be appreciative of the little position you got and don't be throwing shade at nobody else. Anyway, okay, now guess who arrives late to the brunch? Candice and Kaylin. Girl, I could tell right there they got on my nerves. And then when they made an entrance, they was all loud and stuff like that. Want people to know that they was a lady and stuff as if her trip is about them. It's a lack of consideration for me. Okay, they start. And I'm sure y'all got the same itinerary as everybody else. So why the fuck is you up here lagging? Let's move on. They start talking about SEX at the table and stuff. And Becky, Bree, and Jordan and PJ start talking. Becky over there asking Bree about do she give head or how often would she want to give head and then and all this other stuff. PJ like, what the hell is this? Now, the way Becky was talking to, she was also talking as though PJ don't went down on her. That's also how she was talking as though, you know, they had a little thing or something going on over there. And he was just over there like, girl, that's not cool. That's not cute. You giving away details and I don't like that. You need to be a bit more discreet. I'm like, child, I guess, honey, I guess a little more discreet, child. Mm -mm. I don't know why y'all can't see that y'all not a match for each other, but we'll let y'all continue and carry on. Okay, let's get to Cheryl and Becky, okay? Cheryl and Becky talking while getting massages, right? And the question comes up about what Cheryl is looking forward to when it comes to Gerald moving in. And what does Cheryl say? Cheryl says splitting rent. This is what Becky Diddy Bop headed said, okay, with her fake ass. She said, oh, of course, but that's not all that, that big talk you was doing when you was over there on the balcony with Brie. You was co-signing Brie, remember? And then now you want to have a conversation with uh, Cheryl and be like, of course, of course, girl, shut up. So Brie does a photo shoot for her shea butter or whatever. And while, they, uh, while they're um, doing all of this, it sounded like Jordan was about to tell her he loved her or something because they taking pictures and stuff. He ended up getting a camera for her to take pictures or whatever. And she was like, thank you so much, Jordan. I really appreciate that. Like, thank you so much. And he was like, yeah, he was like, it's no problem. I love photos. And I was like, you love what? I love you. You love what? OK, yeah. Then he said, I love Paul's photos, mm -hmm, honey. Anyway. So they end up later on that night having a tequila tasting. Thanks to Jordan, he brought somebody out so they could taste these different types of tequila. Who was late again? Candace and Kaylin. Girl, they could never go nowhere else with me. And then when they come in, they all loud and shit. I all that. And girl, you could never. I make sure if you and I go on a trip, it's going to be separate. Girl, it's going to be separate. I already see how you run. First of all, I'm not going to want to deal with people that's always late. No, ma'am, mm -mm, girl, everybody should have been down at a certain hour. OK, and then y'all should have all went out there together. All right. So if you know that your friend be a little late and you want everybody else to link up at nine, tell her at eight, be there at eight so she can be there on time. No, ma'am. Anyway, so Amanda, um, she's so mad that her man not there that she's so focused on everybody else. In my opinion, she over there mad at um, Cheryl for coming out of her shell. And then she's over there feeling a way about Jordan watching Cameron. And Brie, it's like, girl, worry about what you got going on. Okay, I guess. Um, what else is happening? So Ty is speaking to the girls about needing to talk to Candace and Caitlin because she's not really liking how they are handling the events and things like that, right? So how they're being late, they're being uh, inconsiderate of herself, other people, all of that. So she wants to talk to them. Well, what ends, ended up happening was Candace went over to invade her space. First, it was Caitlin. He telling her, you a boss chick, you a boss chick or whatever. Don't let nobody else tell you anything different. I said, okay, the fact that you came to her and said that lets me believe that y'all didn't even pay for this trip. Y'all didn't even pay for this trip. They did. She paid for this trip or product. You ain't even pay for this. You a boss chick. I said, uh uh, baby. You know, yeah. Don't let nobody else tell you nothing different. You a boss chick. I'm like, it's always the people that be the most disrespectful. I ain't pay for nothing up in here, honey. I ain't got time. Let's move on. 
Um, what else happened? So Candace comes over, and I don't like the energy Candace gives to Ty. I don't know if they may have had a little girl on girl relationship in the past or something like that, in the midst of them being best friends or something, because the way she always wants to hug on her and kiss on her and want to kiss her on her lips and stuff. Um, girl, scoot back just a little bit, just a little back up off me, girl, just a little bit. I don't like all that energy, okay? You all up in here with yours get back um ty starts crying because she's feeling overwhelmed and i'm tired of ty being a cry baby a little bit because it like when she cries it don't make sense in the moment and i'll be understanding that i i, I have a completely different image of, of of tylen so when i see her cry I'll be like what you crying for like what is this you know it, it's something about it now later on throughout the night i understood why she started crying but in that moment why are you crying now what is what is wrong? Is something else going on with you? And that's why Candace was in her face like, girl, tell me what's wrong. She was like, you don't get to cry on my shoulder and not tell me what's up. And that's when Ty was like, girl, I'll tell you, but I just don't want to have this conversation right now. Like, we could just talk about it later. Let's talk about it later. Right. The reason she was not trying to talk to Kaylin, I mean, to Candace was because of the cameras. She didn't want to embarrass her friend on national TV and she didn't want to embarrass herself. So it was like, girl, let's just wait until a later time and you and I can have this conversation. But of course, Candace wanted this conversation. She come upstairs trying to talk to Kaylin um, after she go after um, after Tylen goes upstairs with her boyfriend. She comes upstairs trying to talk to um, uh, Ty and she's all loud and telling the cameras to cut the cameras and stuff. And and Ty's boo Jay had to tell Candace, girl, you need to chill out. And it was just a whole lot going on. First of all, like I said, I didn't understand why she was crying initially but afterwards when you're trying to communicate something to a, piece, to a person and they just act like they don't get it it does get frustrating so I guess I understand why she started to cry after a while because she kept trying to tell Candace I do not want to do this with you in front of these cameras I'm not trying to embarrass you and Candace is still trying to force the conversation to happen and figure out what it is that she did wrong girl why are you not realizing that you're doing too much already how are you gonna come on a show that you're not a part of to be honest, you're just the extra. And then you sit up here yelling at the cameraman to get out of her face. What? That didn't even, girl, good night. Anyway, that's just that. Y'all leave y'all thoughts and comments down below on how y'all felt about episode six, okay? Did y'all understand why Miss Tylen was up there crying? Did y'all feel like Miss Candace and Kaylin was in the wrong? Do you feel like Candace was in the wrong for wanting to know what the hell was going on with her good friend Tylen? Let me know y'all thoughts and comments. Also, how y'all feeling about Amanda trying to be selfish with her friendship with Miss uh, Tylen? Leave your thoughts and comments down below. I'm Jamie, that's me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share my videos, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.